Enhancing the user interface for a website or application isn't easy, especially as a developer. But in today's video, we have this submission here from Sylvanleaf for YT Downloader, a website that he's created. We're going to use Enhance UI principles and design concepts to make this look a little bit better. I'm going to link this in the description below, as well as Enhance UI, which is a book that will help people on how to design a website and app a little bit better. If you haven't heard of me before, I'm Adrian from Australia. I do videos around design and development, so before we get started, hit like and subscribe, and let's just jump straight into it. Here is the website for YT Downloader. It's a pretty simple website which has the concept of being able to download a file straight from YouTube, whether that's an MP3 or an MP4. Now, this design here is pretty standard and I've actually recreated here in Figma. What we're going to do is take a look at the UI components in here to see what enhancements we can do to make it work and look a little bit better. The first thing I would recommend is changing the color that we're using here for the header. This is a solid red. And while it's a nice color because it represents YouTube, you'll notice in YouTube they only use it on their logo. They don't use it that often anywhere else besides maybe on subscribe buttons. Here, it's a little bit too harsh on the eyes. So there's a few different options we could do here. We could, for example, select this to be a white color. And that way it'll stand out a lot better, especially in our gray text here. The other thing we can do is also add maybe a small couple pixel line here to the top where we might be using that red color. This way it stands out a little bit more. When we do this, we'll have to update the text that we have here in the background. So I'm gonna select this and I'm just gonna select it to be black to start off with. For the title here, we might actually select this to still stay red, just so that it has a bit of contrast between our title and our actual menu here. Now, one thing I've noticed here is for the title, we have a custom font, but while this is nice for a logo, for example, we might not want to apply this to every single part of our website. So the second recommendation here is for the menu. I would make this a little bit smaller, maybe 18 pixels. And I'd also change the font here to maybe something like Roboto. That way it can be a little bit more easier to read as well. Since we're on the home page, we might want to select that to be bold. And the other two here, we might actually give them a small opacity of maybe 75% so that they don't stand out anymore. This way we'll just align everything a little bit to be more centered and that should look a lot better now. With this done, we've got more focus on the actual content while the menu still stands out very well here. We also have a bit of a background gradient happening here. Now this is only about two to four pixels. One thing you can do with background gradients is actually increase them a little bit. So I'm gonna increase this to about 12 pixels and I'm not gonna give it any offset. And I'm also gonna reduce it to about 15%. And this way it's a little bit lighter on the eyes and doesn't actually feel so overwhelming. So it's more like a single layer growth in the depth rather than two or three layers. Now that we've got our header done, we can have a look at the next part of our website, which is this image here with this top section for the downloader. We currently have this image here and this isn't actually providing any additional value because the image doesn't really represent anything on this website. It seems to be a custom image just pulled in to give this page a bit of variation. My recommendation here would be to either use a different image or remove it entirely, which is what I'm going to do. This puts more focus here on this downloader section. This downloader doesn't also mean too much. We get the idea that it is a section that tells us that we will be downloading content. So something more specific like download content would be better in this case. We're also using two different colors, which are an off red rather than the primary red we're using. Personally, I would recommend just to use black here and we can keep the focus of the, having that sharp red from YouTube on the YouTube logo. Finally, we've got a couple of custom fonts here. It's a different custom font than from the logo. Personally, I wouldn't recommend having so many different custom fonts. And in this case, I would recommend just swapping this back to Roboto just so we're consistent with the menu as well as the content for the rest of the site. Since this will be a little bit bigger now, I'm gonna reduce the size to maybe say 24 pixels. And I'll also make that bold and move that here into place. This way it's not giving too much priority based on the content. This is just an introduction to what this is. This next section here is a section where we've got the two buttons as well as the section to download a URL. Now, one thing I've noticed is that these two buttons are overwhelmingly large. And the second one here for download an MP4 isn't very clearly defined simply because it's on a gray background and doesn't appear until you click on it. 
For this whole section, I would say that it would be best to contain it inside of one rectangle, which we could make as a white color so that it stands out. We can also give this a bit of an effect. So maybe a background shadow similar to what we have here in the header. So maybe 15 pixels of blur with about 12% for the shadow. That way it's standing out just a little bit there. The next thing we can do is now pull these buttons into that section so that they stand out a little bit more. I'm also going to make them a little bit smaller too, so that way they make more sense. So here I'm just going to select both of them and we're going to just resize them down. When we do that, we're going to have to make sure that we increase the text size here. And the other thing I'd like to be able to do is center them properly. So we're just going to do that over here. Now that these two stand out a little bit better, I want to change how the actual look of them works. Because right now, we can't define them as buttons, they work more like tabs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them here to the very top of our box. And for this one here, I'm just going to move this section to be at the bottom and select this to have a red color. So that way we know it's the primary option. This second one here, I'm going to make as a gray color. So we'll do maybe a black with 50% opacity. And that way we know it's a second option that we can select to click on if we wanted to. These two make a lot more sense now and work a lot better. Now that we've done this, we could even move this primary tab here to the top. And that actually looks even better than when we have it at the bottom. We get that this is a tab now and that if we select the other one, we'll get an option for downloading an MP4. But the content more or less stays the same. Now we can move on to the inputs, which there are a few things we can do. The first thing I would recommend is not to have any borders on them, just so that the background makes them stand out. That looks a lot better. The other thing I'm going to do is move them up a little bit. So I'm going to move this one just over here and give it just about the same amount of padding all around. We can actually move this down just a tad because I'd like to be able to place the label above it rather than having a placeholder inside. The other thing I'm going to do is possibly give it a bit of a radius. So I'm going to give it a border radius of about 30 pixels. So it looks nice here. And the final thing I'm going to do is just make it a tiny bit darker by doing a color of F1, F1, F1. This way it can stand out. For this title text here, we see that we have a strong red color for the optional tag, while the title here is a light gray. Personally, I would swap this around. Even better, we could make the title here a black, while the optional tag can be a light gray. And this makes much more sense. We can also make it a little bit bigger. So in this case, I'm probably going to make it about 24 pixels. And that way it should look pretty good while not taking away from the input itself. For the input, I'm going to move the icon inside of there. But rather than having it a solid black, I might give it 50% opacity or even 25% opacity so it doesn't take away from the actual content. And for the placeholder text, we might just copy this across and make it font size 16. We'll give this whole section maybe a gray color. And in here, we'll put in example title. Finally, this section is now done. We can copy over the same sort of a structure for our second bit here, which is the URL. Now for this URL, I'm going to get rid of all of this and we're just going to copy over this icon and just give it an opacity here of, I think it was 25% and replace the YouTube logo. Now, if we take a look at the URL, one thing we're going to notice is that it is a required option and it's almost the first option that you need. So personally, since it's required, I'm going to just put this in over here and make it that red color that we had previously so that we know that it is a required field. The other thing I'm going to do is make this font size a little bit smaller. So over here, I'm going to make it maybe say 14 pixels. And finally, I'm going to actually move it above the title since it's the first option that we definitely need. This will give it more priority when we're going on to this page. Finally, we'll space it out a little bit so that it's got about 24 pixels from the top of our other content. The only other thing here is that for this placeholder text, we might give an example of what this might be. So in this case, I'm just going to put in HTTPS YouTube forward slash wash watch so that people get an idea of what they're meant to put in here. And this finishes up this section. The only other thing I would do is maybe make this font size a little bit smaller so it's consistent with the one above. The final part for this page is doing these two buttons over here, which are actually quite small for some strange reason. These are the buttons we'll be using inside of our content. The thing about these buttons is that one of them isn't necessarily useful. 
the clear button here can actually be removed simply because normally what we can do is have a small clear section next to the input itself. For the time being, I'm not going to have it in there and we'll just have the section here to download. This download, which says MP3, isn't as useful as having some text which says download MP3. This way it's more specific about what its interaction is doing. The other thing we want to be able to do here is possibly expand it out to be the full width and also to give it more border radius, so maybe 30 pixels. We'll also increase its height so it's consistent with the input above and it's got a bit of a box shadow which I'm going to get rid of. Now that we've done all of that we can just move the text to also be aligned with the rest of our other texts and also increase this actual icon so that it's also the same size as our other icons. This way all of our items here are more or less consistent with each other and work the way we would expect them. This button also feels like it's a little bit too large so I'm going to reduce it and place it down here below. Finally, since we've used up the rest of this box, we can make it a little bit smaller now. Let's also make sure that everything is fine here. And in the case that they do want a second button for clear, we can always just copy this one across. We could, for example, give this a slightly more gray color and give the text here a darker shade. And let's do clear content as the text for that. And this clear content will also give it about 75% opacity so that we can see it's a secondary button. Since it's also a little bit too big, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller over here and we're also going to center it. Now that we've done this section over here, we'll take a look at the logo here and the content. This can probably also be a line left and we could make this a little bit bigger just so that it fits in with the rest of our content. This whole section now could even be moved here to the left or somewhere in the center so that it fits in properly with our design with the same amount of padding from the top and the bottom. And this pretty much finishes up this design. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's take a look at what we started off with and what we ended up with. Here we've got an example of how we started. On the old website there was this strong emphasis to click what looks like a button here, which is actually a tab and wouldn't do anything. Well, the new website is clearly indicated as a tab and that way you know you can swap between one and the other. The second option was to put in a URL, which is a required field. But since both the title and the URL both had a red color in there, it was a little bit confusing. So we fixed that up by both moving the URL to the first option, as well as only making it a required when it's red and keeping the optional as a gray. And finally, we've made the call to action quite clear. Before it was this tiny little button here that said MP3, whereas now it's a large button, which has a full bit of text here that says download MP3. And since it's a strong red color, it shows up as the primary action button for this website. Enhancing the user interface of any website or app is really just following some rules and understanding some basics in design, which is what I'm trying to teach in the Enhance UI book. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, which gives you a bit of an idea of some of the principles we'll be learning. If you want to learn more about Enhance UI, just go to the website and if you're interested, feel free to sign up to get a discount for the launch date. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.